All right. So the show is produced by Warren Ellis, Avi Siddhar, and a couple other famous names in the production world, and cartoon world, and the writing world, and all this other stuff. Uh, Fred, Fred Siebert, Fred Seibert, he works on uh, Adventure Time, which is also another fantastic show. Anyway, let's go ahead and let me give my opinion. When I first started this, I was like, all right, got my popcorn bowl. I've been waiting 30 years, even though I'm only 25. And uh, let's do it. So I go to Netflix, and it turns out it's only four episodes long. That was kind of a red flag to start with. But it makes up for itself, I think. So anyway, number two. Okay, I'll just go into spoilers. So spoilers, if you don't want any spoilers, do not watch past this point. Do not watch past this point. So, spoilers. So, episode one starts, and we're dead smack following, I think, Lisa. Lisa into Castle Dracula. And I think she's a vampire hunter. I think she's some sort of Belmont from the Game Boy game. Um, I think it's Belmont's Revenge or Legacy. Uh, Castlevania Adventures 2. I think you play a girl. I could be wrong. I'm sorry for any <sighs> misconceptions. Anyway, so you follow Lisa, who I originally thought was a Belmont. And they were going to rewrite everything or something like that. Uh, and she goes into Drac. She goes into the castle, and she just is like, "Hey, I hear you got a cool science lab in this place." And he's like, "Yeah." Well, she meets Dracula face to face right at the steps. She didn't have to go through the entire castle like we all did as the Belmont clan to even meet Dracula or have a conversation. So she just walked right in and he met her in the uh, living room. I'll call, I'll call it the living room. <laughs> the, uh, anyway, so they start having a conversation. Uh, Dracula is portrayed a little differently than I thought he would be. I thought he would just be... Uh, a lot more evil, a lot more uh, just kind of already pushed away humanity, uh, doesn't really care, isn't looking for love, is just kind of taking women here and there, making them brides, breeding with them, creating monsters and abominations and all that stuff. So anyway, uh, he's portrayed a little differently in the first 10 minutes. And then... The next scene after all this meets, and it's, it's, been a, it's been a couple years or something like that since Dracula has met Lisa. Within that time, they marry, and then basically the church comes, takes Lisa from her home, burns her home down because they think she's a witch, and because she's, she's a lady of science, so she had weird things around her house that the uh, people did not like, so they burned her. And anyway, so this starts a huge revenge by Dracula, who, within, within these years of being married to Lisa, has sworn to travel as man, act as man. He wears a wedding ring. Um, within all this time, I was kind of like, this is not the Castlevania Dracula I envisioned, and I don't like this. I just wanted, Ca I just wanted Dracula to be this, almost this, just force that Belmont was trying to get to the entire time. But I get you have to make characters interesting and they can't just be sort of one-sided anymore, even though I do like one-sided characters. Sometimes I like there to just be a black and a white, uh, a good guy, a bad guy. You know, but tis the age of gray areas in writing. So I get it. I get it. Anyway, so past all that, uh, where was I? Past all that, uh, Dracula gives the people of Wallachia, which is the place, I don't understand why they just didn't call it Transylvania, because they called it Transylvania in the games. But anyway, Wallachia and its surrounding people to leave the land within a year, or he will unleash the army of hell upon them. They do not take Dracula's advice. They stay there. A year passes. That's something I wanted to add, is I did like how this show, how this show paces itself. Is It gives these, these huge time, well, not huge time frames, but time frames where, you know, a year or more has passed, but it does it like that. 
and it, it gives you the important stuff and then it's boom right into the next thing boom right into the next thing it's very good pay it's very it's paced very well uh anyway so dracula unleashes his horde kills the archbishop kills a whole bunch of people all these this show is gory good lord i didn't think it'd be as gory as it was um i well okay i thought it'd be i, I, I thought it'd have blood but i didn't think it'd be like uh eating babies and cutting people in half and <laughs> entrails everywhere. That stuff it caught me off guard. It, I mean, it's good. It's, it's well done. It's well done, but it's, uh, it's uh, a little surprising at first. Anyway, so then we meet Trevor Belmont, who this is one other part of the story that I felt was a little too cliche. Trevor Belmont, as opposed to just being how we meet him in Castlevania, Dracula's Curse, number three. And right here in his pixelated form, his wonderful pixelated form. When we meet him in this show, he is basically a, if you like, I guess, Rebels, Star Wars Rebels, or you like Han Solos, or characters where they're a little funny, they've got some wit to them, but they're also kind of badass. Um, they're drunks, kind of on one side, and he's excommunicated his family has been excommunicated from the church which this makes me go into a different theory that i think konami is now rolling with so kind of interesting i'll go into that a little later anyway so anyway he's kind of a drunk he's kind of a he's he's kind of reckless a little bit just because he's drunk and things like that um he's kind of the cliche like i said the cliche character of you know he doesn't really care anymore. You guys have abandoned me. Whatever. I kind of would have liked to just seen that the Belmonts get called in to deal with this stuff. It's very, it's very much just how it is. Like whenever we start Castlevania three, what's the first thing we see is a kneeled over. Well, besides the castle and stuff like that, but it's a, it's a, it's a, it's basically a kneeled down or something. <clears throat> Trevor, who then gets up and throws his cape. I thought that was the coolest thing in the world is his cape. When he threw it in that 8-bit action. Ooh. Anyway. So that's the first time we see him. And then he just goes straight into Dracula's castle. But don't get me wrong. I understand that you have to make things a little interesting. And there has to be some backstory. And there has to... Things have to make sense. I... Because I, you can do so much in a video game. You can do so less in a video game. Or so much more. Whatever. In story. Cartoon. Gotta get people to like it. Anyway. So we go from there... And that's basically the first episode. The first episode is kind of Trevor going around. Well, actually, the first episode is just Dracula being like, all right, it's been a year. <sighs> Fire and brimstone. Or hellfire and uh, goblin demons. Goblin bat demons. And uh, eat babies and stuff. So that's, so that's what kind of happens in the first episode. Uh, I'm not going to go into every episode. I'm just going to tell you that Everything in that show looks amazing. Now, I don't know how they how they did it, but it does remind me, I don't know if any of you remember, but the old HBO cartoons that were done by uh, Todd McFarlane and a couple other people, uh, Spawn, the Spawn uh, movies that they did, the, the cartoon ones. This very this reminded me very much of it with the grit, the gore, the, the uh, attitude of it, and things like that. Of course, it wasn't as dark as and by dark i mean just color scheme the color palette was definitely not as dark as the spawn uh cartoons but anyway enough it reminds me of that and i do like those i i grew up on those watching those and i have a few on dvd anyway so enough with the first episode one thing i wanted to go into that makes it very interesting is the way that trevor talks about how his family the belmonts who had always fought dracula in this show he says it in this show they, they have always fought Dracula and his hordes and the demons and things like that. And the vampire, is an, the, the, the vampire killer is an already existing whip that has been, you know, given the ability to kill demons and vampires and things like that. So it makes me think that Konami went, all right, so our Lord's a shadow timeline, which I liked that game. I know a lot of people didn't. I, I liked it. It was, it was fine. I even liked that they tried to do something different. Spoilers on Lords of Shadows making Belmont kind of Dracula and uh, it brought in a lot more like oh well who was the bad guy with the first one it turns out to be Satan and it, it's all this it's it's a pretty good it's a pretty good story it's a good it's a good 
Anyway, uh, I know a lot of people don't like it, but this leads me to say this, that I think this show has shown that Konami is like, all right, let's stay with our original timeline, which starts with Castlevania, Lament of Innocence. You were Leon Belmont. And uh, actually, that's a pretty good game, regardless of what anybody says. That's actually a very good game. Uh, the camera angles do suck during the platforming sections, but they're not, it's not, un, it's not undoable. It's, you just tap square at a certain point and you're good. Anyway, so that makes me think, and it makes me hopeful, fingers crossed, that they have wiped the slate clean of Lords of Shadow, and they are just sticking with the original timeline, where you, you know, you've got, a uh, Laments of Innocence, and then all the way down to Aria of Sorrow, Dawn of Sorrow, whatever. Anyway, uh, yeah, so this makes me very hopeful as a, uh, Castlevania fan, because then it makes me think, well, if they release a Castlevania game on the Switch or any Nintendo product or anything like that, what if it's Castlevania 5? Because they can, and it doesn't have to be Lords of Shadow or anything like that. It doesn't have to be any of that anymore. They can go back to this, because this is kind of what they're pushing right now with the TV show, which is very interesting, in my my opinion. And I, and I know a lot of fans out there are probably, I don't know if you thought about this, but that means that they're pushing the old timeline which, that's awesome, man. That, that means it's all, it's all, it was all for something. It wasn't for nothing. Thanks to uh, Lords of Shadow. But anyway, so the show was good. The show was good. Uh, they make up for Dracula's, uh, well, in my opinion, they make up for Dracula's uh, first ten minutes in the show after Lisa gets burned at the stake. Um, segway, this is a weird segue, straight into it. Anyway, so Dracula has done very well, in my opinion with uh after lisa dies because then he's dracula he's he's evil he's bringing his revenge on the world he doesn't like humanity he wants him gone so uh let's go into this who plays trevor belmont richard armitage armitage god i hope i'm saying that right i'm probably not anyway uh he played thorin oakenshield in the hobbit movies the hobbit trilogy so that is probably where you hear that voice from if you go, oh, I have recognized that, but who is that? Richard Armitage. Tej. Uh, Alucard. Fan favorite Alucard. Symphony of the Night. And a couple other things. Fa Ooh, hold on. Dracula's Curse. I know you guys can't see me. Alucard. Uh... Right there. Alucard, in his first appearance, issue... I don't know. Anyway, issue Dracula's Curse, issue three. Um, I actually like that colorway. I actually like the way he looks there. And I like the way he looks in Symphony of the Night. Of course, don't get me wrong. But I like the way he looks there. Anyway, so Alucard is... Uh, he has a... In the first episode, you see him for maybe a minute. But it escalates quickly. <laughs> And anyway, um, and then you will see him at the end of episode four, intent. It's pretty cool. Anyway, Alucard, they do portray him. I think, I think they portray him well. I think, I, I, I think they do fine with him. They even add a, uh, what is it that there's a, there's a, there's a tension between Alucard and Trevor, as opposed to being like, Hey, you don't like Dracula? I hate Dracula. Let's kill Dracula. Anyway, so, the show is good. It, oh, Alucard is played by James Callis, who I actually met at Dragon Con one year. He's very nice. He's a very cool guy. And uh, I saw his name on the uh, credits. I was like, James Callis? Who in the world does he play? Alucard. And if you don't know who James Callis is, he is the fantastic guy Baltar on Battlestar Galactica, the sci-fi remake that they did. Um... I recommend that show if anybody has never watched that show. But anyway, yeah, Castlevania, guys. Castlevania on Netflix, four episodes. Uh, oh, I'm going to tell you this: Castlevania has already been green has has already been greenlit for a second season, where they are doubling the amount of episodes. So there will be eight episodes. This is awesome. Now I'm hoping it doesn't take a year and a half to two years 
to get these out and I'm hoping it's kind of like a trick towards us. It was testing the waters where they were like, oh, okay, well, let's see if there's any interest out there for retro video games done right in the cartoon variety or uh, video production, whatever. And I, I think it was done well. I didn't even delve into the battle scenes, did I? The battle scenes are fantastic, guys. The battle scenes, two, two in general that I can think of. Uh, oh, we meet Saifa. God, I'm terrible at these videos because <laughs> I, I don't have a list. I'm just going off the top of my head. We are ter I'm terrible at these. Anyway, we, we meet Saifa. And I don't know if you guys remember Saifa from Dracula's Curse. I Sorry, I don't have her perler. But she she's in the show and she's pretty badass. Uh, she uses ice magic. I know you Castlevania fans like that ice magic. She's awesome. She's awesome in uh, that show. She's done right. Anyway, well... I guess she's done right. Anyway, uh, the battle scenes are absolutely fantastic. Trevor fights a, a stone, a stone-eyed cyclops or some stone-gazing cyclops or something, where it's basically the cyclops that shoots a beam out of its eye, and if it hits you, it turns in, it turns you into stone, sort of like a Medusa Gorgonite thing. Um, anyway, that is one of the prettiest battle scenes I've ever seen in my life just how just how Trevor moves in and out of pillars and there's beams coming at him and oh, oh my gosh and then how he kills the anyway it is good that's a good battle scene anyway uh there's three battle scenes that I can think of in this move in this uh season that constitute being called a, a, a battle scene there's there's little fights here and there but um is the the second one is Trevor against priests and villagers? It's pretty good. That's 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 pretty cool. Uh, and then to top it all off, us fans get to see Trevor Belmont and Alucard fight, and that's actually a pretty cool fight. But I'll say Trevor Belmont kicks the crap out of Alucard, at least until the end. But yeah, he kicked crap out of him anyway. So that's all I'll say about that. Sorry that this has all been so scattered. But anyway, a few things I just want to retouch on was the show was good. Give it the first episode if you do not think the show is kind of what you'd be into. At least watch the first episode and then go into the second one. Start meeting more characters. Start, start getting a feel for the world and things like that. I promise you'll probably like it. Uh, if I had to rate this show, it would probably be an 8 out of 10. Because there were a few things here and there that... You know, I just don't really like cliched writing, but I get that you have to do it. I, I get that you have to do it. Well, excuse me, cliched writing, I don't want to say the writing is that cliche, but I do want to say that the characters are kind of cliche a little bit, but of course, it's storytelling. Every character is just, I mean, it's all kind of the same stuff anyway. But with the skin put on of Castlevania, it's a story with Castlevania skin on it, and it's pretty good. I like it. I like it. I give it an 8 out of 10, guys. It was very good. Four episodes. I'm hoping I don't have to wait a year and a half or two and that the hype can kind of still remain and they'll release more episodes that they have done, which I'm not saying they have. I hope they have because it would be a smart move because we waited a while for this. And if I got to wait longer to get eight episodes, oh, and I'll say this, they don't even get to Dracula's castle by the, by the end of the first season. So... They, you know, there's there's a lot of time here to figure this out. But anyway, good show. Uh, another thing I'm very hopeful for is that with all of this, with everything that they've said in the show, it already hints that Konami's like, we're going back to the old timeline. All this stuff still matters. And the way that stuff that doesn't matter matters. Like, video, like this stuff doesn't really matter. But to fans, it matters. Anyway. All this still matters again. I hope so, because then that would constitute them making a Castlevania V in the future, which would be fantastic. Anyway, uh, let's see. I had some other topics. Yes, so that's pretty much the main point, is that the show was good. I think it means that the timeline is coming back, which could mean that Castlevania V is going to come out, and I don't even know where that would take place, but that would be so freaking cool. And, uh, I'm back. I'm back on YouTube. I, I've been gone. I had to move and things like that. But that's enough about me.
All right, guys. Well, thanks for tuning in. I'm sorry I'm so scatterbrained, and uh, there's no scripts to this, so hopefully you like it. Um, good show. Good show. All right, guys. Say bye. Say bye, Trevor and Alucard. All right, y'all. See y'all next time.